Hello everyone, we are group number five and this is our outline. First, I'm introducing the company Hamburg Suit Group. Then um, Tina and Laura are presenting the Portis Five Forces. Afterwards, Annie and Heidi are presenting the SWOT analysis. And Angela and Shirley are talking about the future strategy. And in the end, I summarize the main points in the conclusion. The Hamburg Sea Group is one of the 20 largest container ship lines on the whole world and one of the main providers in north-south trades. The company provides more than just a simple transportation from port to port. It also focuses on tailored customer needs and covers the whole logistic chain from planning to implementation. The Hamburg Sea Group covers five different business areas. The liner shipping, tramp shipping, shipping, logistic service, ship management, and also a travel agency. All those areas are covered by the German carrier Hamburg Süd, Alianca, a Brazilian shipping company, and the Columbus Ship Management, Chief um, MBH. Thousands of employees are working in more than 300 offices all around the world. And 100 um, container ships and 400,000 containers are delivering products to customers all over the world every day. Punctuality, reliability, and high technical standards are um, guaranteed by the Hamburg Suit Liner Service. Hamburg Suit and Alianca are also responsible for the tram shipping. Tram shipping means um, that it's customer needs driven, and it's not only operating on fixed route and um, fixed sailing times. Um, the Columbus um, Ship Management is responsible for the logistics service and they're also responsible for the technical management and the material handling. The company itself de um, declares itself as future driven and also as a company with long tradition. They guarantee to meet customer needs as fast and as smoothly as possible and the corporate culture is also coined by tolerance, openness and respect. They also guarantee um, responsible handling with natural resources. And next I'm going to introduce the Porter Five Force analysis of Hamburg Zoo. And first one is the threat of substitute. In same or different industry, two companies might become competitive because of its service or product it offers too similar and also can satisfy the customer needs. So the customer has more chance and more choice to choose the, uh, which one they want to pay for. But in shipping industry, there's some exception because from the viewpoint of efficiency, the air freight uh, is the substitution of shipping because it can deliver the products more faster than shipping. And but from the geography, the viewpoint of geography, the road and the rail transport is the substitution of shipping because it can directly and correctly send the package to the destination as the customer wants. So we think that the threat of substitution depends on different kind of situation. It depends on um, how and where and how long the customer wants to deliver their products. And the second one is bargaining power of supplier. The bargaining power of supplier um, is high when there are few competitors in the same industry and each other can control uh, and then can control the price more easily because um, they are not that high competition. And in shipping industry, they basically um, had no real substitution to replace the buyer demand because each sub service provider has its own certain characteristics. So that the buyer is difficult to support the switching cost and also um, it's more harder to find another supplier to offer the substitution. In a shipping company, they not only need the, uh, the equipment, the labor, and those hardware and software, they all, the most important thing is the sheep. But unfortunately, this company doesn't have its own shipyard to do their own sheep, so they must rent the sheep from the other, co other company. So the bargaining power of the sheep suppliers have, really high, have a really high bargaining power to negotiate a price with the, with the buyers. Um, I will introduce the other three uh, the other three forces. So the first one uh, that I'm going to introduce is the bargaining power of the buyers. And so the suppliers always want to maximize their profits, and uh, the buyer therefore wants to minimize the price they have to pay, or they want to get a better quality for paying the same price. So um, the bargaining power of the buyer refers here to the potential of the buyer to actually demand a lower price. 
And in the shipping industry, the number of customers is quite high, which would mean that the bargaining power would be low, because otherwise, um, if there were lo like not a lot of customers, then they would have a big market share. Um, but the switching costs are low, and also there is a big number of suppliers, which means that the customers have a lot of alternatives to choose from. And um, this is why, in um, our opinion, the bargaining power of the buyer is high. My next point is going to be the threat of new entries, and um, in the shipping industry it is possible to make quite a lot of profit. This is why a lot of people want to compete in this industry. Um, but there are a lot of barriers to the entry. So the first barrier for us is the capital requirement. You need a lot of capital to actually compete in this industry, and you have to make an upfront investment, which keeps a lot of people from the, from the entry into this industry. Second one is the government restriction. Um, for example, in less developed countries, the shipping industry is often managed by the government. And the third one is that you need experienced employees to actually be successful in this interest industry. So in our opinion, the threat of new entrants is low. And the last point is going to be the intensity of the rivals. And um, you can find rivalry in every, every business, and in every industry, in every field, and it's also part of our daily lives. And the rivalry is referred to as the fight for market share and profits. And the intensity of the rivalry is high when there is a lot of exit barriers, which is the case here because you have to make a lot of uh, capital, or you have to put a lot of capital in upfront and a lot of investment, so you don't want to just uh, leave this industry because you would have some sunk costs. And also the industry, or the intensity of the rivalry is most intense in stagnating markets. So if there's a lot of growth, you can make, like you can get new customers and acquire new customers, but if it's stagnating, then you need to get the market share in this market. So it's quite a lot of competition. And also the services that are provided in the shipping industry are quite similar, like all the suppliers would offer similar services. This is why you, there's also a lot of uh, competition and the switching costs are low. That's why we're saying that the rivalry and the um, competition is high. And now I will talk about the spot analysis and the first one is about the trends. And the uh, uh, Hamburg suit is a subsidiary of the Arctic group. And this group is uh, the largest and best known uh, family enterprises in Germany, they encompass the entire logistics chain from playing to the implementation and not just from port to port and also from the door to door. And the next one is they also have the subsidiary about the travel agency, they offer the travel in and the event management. And over the 30 years, they had developed into a specialized service by providing a business trip, business travels, and also the business event and the cruises. And the third one is the, you can see on this table, is about the operator share around the world. And the Hamburg suit is ranked in number 12. It's quite of high around the world. And the last one is the, recently the, this company used the tap due software and they increase the efficiency and the productivity uh, because this software uh, they help the people uh, easier and more convenience and more quickly to analyze the data and with this data, by using this data they will increase their collaboration uh, between different locations around the world and help the public company uh, gain a competitive advantage uh, better than other logistic company, and let's move on to the weakness. And you can see on this map the shipping route, the shipping route uh, around the world about this company. And you can see the Hamburg Zoo is always focused on North and South America and also Europe. But the the their shipping route is the of lake of the Asia and the Austria part. I'm going to introduce the external part of SWOT about opportunity. The first point is economic, economic recovery. According to the International Monetary Fund, with United States economy become more dynamic, the global economy will grow by 3.7% and world trade grow by 4.5%. The second point, uh, in shipping industry, 
capital requirement is high. And so, so Alliance can keep cost down. United Arab Shipping Company and Hamburg do sign a global co cooperation agreement. This cooperation will enable the companies to complement each other's cross service and networks. It offers both sides customer a more comprehensive global reach service. And the second one, as you can see in the graph, the, the oil price has decreased recently. Lower oil price means the operating cost for shipping lines. About 50% of the cost for shipping goods around the world today come from the purchase of fuel. Lower energy price can uh, are a benefit to shipping, shipping companies. And the last one is uh, nowadays, nowadays people are emphasized on social responsibility. And this company uh, run for charity and help SOS children village. It made efforts on non-profit events to build a positive public image. About the threat, there are many competitors in this industry. The shipping industry is facing, is facing with overcapacity problems. Second, the second one, um, the Eurozone country had zero growth, growth in the second quarter this year. The low growth rate and inflation in the Euro area will in reduction, reduce Hamburg due orders. Uh, the third one, because of the in International Convention for Preventing Pollution, Hamburg Hamburg would have to lower CO2 emissions. So it will cost extra $40 million in opera operational expense. The last one is, uh, according to a new survey by international shipping accountant and, consul and consultant, most Stanford, vessel operating costs are expected to ri rise about 3% in both 2015 and 2014. Okay, I'm Shirley. I'm going to talk about the future strategy. And uh, Porter, he was points out there's three general strategies. Uh, there are overall cost leadership, differentiation strategy, and focus strategy. And he thinks that if a company he wants to uh, win a competitive advantage, they need to make the choice of strategy. Uh, so the first one, overall cost leadership, which means uh, the company needs to use their uh, experience before to try to decrease as much the cost as they can and uh, make the cost deep lower than their compet competitors. And But by doing this, they need to do it by the scale up. But the risk is that uh, scale up may make, uh, make the product update not easily. And then the second one is differentiation strategy. This means, except the price, they need to make customer feel different about their company. And maybe it's like uh, change the design or add more function for their product, but it will always make the price higher. So uh, the risk is that to make the differentiate, may make their high cost. Is it okay for the buyers to accept? And then we comes to focus strategy, which means the company will focus on uh, certain buyers or market or the product. And the general speaking, they'll say it's just the market positioning. And the risk is that the, if the company, the company between uh, if the cost between the company and other competitors, it may make the company lose their cost advantage or their specialty. And Porter thinks that any strategy will have risks. So while choosing a strategy, you are uh, the company should not only see should not focus on what the benefits the strategy will bring, but also see 
what's the risk it may cause. It's more important to focus on the risk. And then uh, humble suit, which shows the differentiation strategy for the future strategy, and Angela will talk about the details. Um, like Shirley just mentioned, we chose the differentiation strategy as our main strategy. Um, because the other two, the overall cost leadership and the focus strategy are not so suitable for us. Because the overall cost leadership strategy um, is, uh, every company can do this, just make sure um, to achieve the lowest cost, that's it. But sometimes the low cost leads to the low quality of service. But we don't want to provide that bad service, so we don't want to follow that. And about the focus strategy, um, Hamburg Suit, this company had already did it because it has different companies to deal with different business in different areas. So we don't talk about it today. So we choose differentiation strategy here. And there are four dimensions in this strategy. Product, service, human resource, and company image building. Um, we want to let our customer think like uh, we are a reliable com company. So maybe we can provide the latest vessel like with the two new technology to make our vessel stronger than others and to uh, and also not to be destroyed in the big storm and the big wave in the ocean. And also the transport transparency is important. Uh, it is good to make customers to know where their goods are. So maybe we can provide a GPS and to uh, make their goods trackable. So our customer can track their goods through a map or a, a little machine. And also we can shorten our delivery time to, to make the efficiency shipping. And we, uh, we suggest that this company can enhance their staff training to make their employees more polite and tell them how to deal with, uh, how to um, contact their customer and their sales and to make things efficiency. And though the Humboldt Sue, this company had already, uh, they're doing the CSR and the environmental part, but we want to make them to uh, strengthen this part because this can make our advantage much better. As a conclusion, we just quickly summarize the main parts and say our suggestion to the company strategy. Um, as you heard before, as Laura mentioned, there is a really high risk of bargaining power of buyers and suppliers. Because in the shipping um, sector, there are huge profits to gain, so it's a really attractive sector for a lot of companies. And also, um, the shipping company, the service they provide is really similar. So also it's really um, easy for customers to switch between different uh, providers. These are the main reasons why it's really important for Hamburg Suit Group to stand out compared to other um, companies. So that's why they really focus on an excellent customer relationship to, um, in order to um, attract customers and also to, as a motivation for them to stick with the Hamburg Suit Group instead of another provider. Another advantage of the company is they are multi-dimensional because they uh, not only provide um, the shipping line and tram shipping, because they also have an own travel agency and organize business events. And as our suggestion for the company um, is, to, um, um, is to improve um, also their ship lines around Asia and Australia because there are just a few um, lines there and they should really work on that to improve it in order to um, be able to provide every kind of service around the world. Thanks for your attention, and do you have any questions? Oh, okay. Thank you.